welcome to or back to, depending on if it's your first time or not, The Bender Bunker, your one-stop shop for B-Bender guitar-related lesson videos. And what you, of course, heard there in the opening is the unmistakable classic refrain of the Merle Haggard rhythm, a working man blues. So hence we call this the working man benders lesson. And this is going to be a trilogy. This is one of three because uh, with that kind of rhythm, it's hard not to just come up with all kinds of bender parts. It's a very fertile hunting ground, if you will, for B-Bender parts. And uh, besides being the classic working man blues rhythm, you're going to find that rhythm in so many classic country and western hits throughout the years after this. This came out in, uh, I believe, 1969, Working Man Blues. It was the number one hit for Haggard and the Boys back in 69. And uh, what always makes me chuckle about that recording is that at some point in the recording of Working Man Blues, Haggard had to turn to Roy Nichols, his classic twang telly player, and go, hey, uh, Roy, why don't you get some coffee? We're going to have James Burton. Another telling master come in and play the solo on that song. So that's just an embarrassment of riches when you got those two twang players to choose from when, during that recording. So how could it not have been a number one hit? And uh, so again, you're going to hear that rhythm in so many different uh, songs, even in contemporary country western today. So it's great to have a few B-Bender ideas on board. And that's what we're doing here. So if that sounds good to you, go grab that bender. And uh, this will again be part one of the trilogy. And we're going to go ahead and get right on to it. Because this lesson's for the working man. Well, all right, let's get the working man bender party started, part one of three lessons. And I thought before we get to the actual notes, uh, it'd be very important to make sure everybody's on the same page with the rhythm. Because, again, this is such a classic rhythm for country and western. I think it's one you need in your arsenal. So let's just spend a brief moment, and it won't take long. Make sure you got this is how we're playing it today. A lot of variations on this theme, but this is what you're hearing on that loop. This is an A, so I'm using the open A string as my anchor. And then I'm taking my index finger on the four and three string on the fifth fret. So it's open A, and then fourth string and third string on the fifth anchored barred with my uh, index. What that allows me to do is use that index finger on the fifth fret as an anchor for the G string with my middle and ring finger on the sixth and seventh fret on the G string to alternate with the open A string to create this rhythm pattern. experimented with that. Now let's get to the meat of the matter. The actual notes of this bad boy and uh, this is kind of a call out to the original, the James Burton solo at least. I mean it's almost identical to get us started. Right? That's the part we're going to learn because the next part involves the bender. So let's learn up to the bender part. Nothing tough about that. Up close for the hot fretboard and high on the fretboard action today. Starting on the G string as we so often do. And we're going to use our middle finger to slide into the 11th fret. And I call this the 1, 2, 3 section of this. So it's three notes, starting with the G string sliding into the 11th. And then index finger on the B string 10th for the two notes. Now, you've just done the two notes on the B string 10th. We're going to do four dead percussive notes. So... Of course, the percussive notes being achieved by the index finger on the 10th there on the B string, just coming off the fretboard but not leaving the string so it can give me that percussive quality we need. So, one, two, three, four percussive notes with that dead string on the an index finger on the 10th fret there, and then go ahead and put the index finger back down for one solid note. So now we've got... Once we do that last note after the four percussives, we're going to allow our middle finger to go up two frets on the B string to the twelfth. It's going to be one full note with a real quick bend. Sort of like a chicken thing. So, here's what we've got now. Okay. And then let's go back and do the one, two, three again like the very first way we started. And that's the whole opening sequence before the bender gets involved. So here it is again on a slower pace. All right. So now we're going to get the bender involved. It's about time. All 
So what we're doing after that last one, two, three, we're sliding up to the top two strings with our ring finger and we're going all the way up to the 17th fret. When we get there, it's top two strings being barred with your ring finger. Once you get there and you're ready for it, you're going to start by up picking your B string, your second string there on the 17th, taking the bender all the way up. When you get to the top of that bend, go ahead and keep the bender fully engaged. Hit the high E that's covered as well on the 17th. Come back to the still bent B and let it down. Real simple. So the bender's going up and the bender's going down. That's all it is. Now, I'm up picking each of those three notes, starting with the B string, up picking, bender goes up, up picking the E string while I'm up there, and then I'm up picking the B string to get it back down. Now, once I get back down, notice how your middle finger is ready and willing to go right there one fret below on the G string on the 16th, and that's the note you're going to need once you get down off that three note bend. <laughs> and you're bending, you're hitting that your middle finger, the 16th fret G string. At that point, I'm down picking. So I've done three up picks. I come down with the bender, and now I'm down picking the G string and the B string together. And I'm bending that 16th fret G string with my middle finger. But I also am still hitting the B string next to it, still covered on the 17th. Which actually is kind of another call out portion because I believe the original is doing in that same area, it's just doing it a different way. Along those lines so we're still kind of weaving in and out of the original at that point so here's what we've got now with the bender involved we just did that first part again all right so now that's we're going back to what we already know so things are picking up the pace for us So when we do that opening sequence a second time, remember that I advised you earlier to do that note on the B string 12th with your middle finger because now you need to put it there as a note and allow your ring finger to go up to the high E 12th because now we need to do this. That's what it is. So. So again, we just did our, we've got a middle finger, B string 12th. We're gonna go ahead and keep it there. Ring finger drops down high E 12th. We start with the B string, go up with the bender, get to the top, hit the high E now that you just covered. Let the uh, middle, your ring finger on the high E up, but it substitute it with your index finger two frets down on the 10th. So we're going and then come back and hit the B string on the 12th that's still bent, letting it down. Now your ring finger's open, ready to go. It rolls over the middle finger to the 12th fret on the G for that last note. All right, so here's all together. those uh, parts we just learned in context with the rhythm. Sounds pretty good to me. So now we're going to do what we already know all over again. That part with the bender the, on the 17th fret that we originally learned played exactly like we just learned it. Come back down, do this part again. Now to end this, we're not going to do what we just learned, which was... We're going to go... What I'm doing there is once I get to this... I'm taking all my fingers off and I am hitting... This is with my ring finger. I'm going on the... This is all on the 12th fret. I'm starting on the B string, uh, all again right here on the 12th fret bar itself, because that's ideal for what I'm doing. These are all harmonics, open string harmonics. So I'm not fretting that, I'm just putting my right on the bar of the 12th fret. And I'm hitting that, taking up the bender. When I get there, I'm doing two on the high E. Coming back to the still bent B. Letting it down. And then I'm hitting the 12th. 
on the G string next to it. Now, what I like to do, because I've heard the ladies like it, can't confirm that. So I like to then, once that G string, your 12th G string harmonic's ringing, I like to go behind the nut and wiggle it. sound better in context with the rhythm. So here's what we've got now. Couple of things about your pick hand. I am, like I am so often, I'm picking right above my bridge pickup for maximum twang. And I'm doing that for most of this lesson, except for the very last part where I want to get as much volume as I can on those harmonic notes. I'm coming off the bridge, I'm going more towards the middle because I notice that the volume I can get with those harmonic notes increases when I pick it more in the middle. And that, my friends, is the Working Man Bender Part 1 lick. Kind of a call-out lick. The rest of them aren't going to be that uh, similar to the original. And I'm going to go ahead and play us on out of here with the rhythm track so you can see all the pieces together. Remember, I've got a link in the Show More section of this video with a link to just the audio so you can practice over the exact rhythm you're hearing and the same tempo and all of that good stuff. Uh, this is a good part. If you liked any part of this, if you're on board for the trilogy, go ahead and hit the like button. If you got any Haggard or Bender fans that might want to see this, hit the share button while you're thinking about it. If you haven't subscribed to The Bunker, and why haven't you? I won't take it personally. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. It's a good time because uh, you might forget to, uh, we're even here later if this is your first visit with us. There's all the, the dog videos and there's cat videos and gaming videos and how to fix your truck and how to fix your heater. Those are just videos I've watched today. So much on YouTube, you might forget about it. So hit, go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're thinking about it. And I'm going to get on out of here like I always do with our motto. Say it with me if you know it. It's never too late to go on a bender, and I hope you do. All right, I'm going to go uh, work on part two and three of the uh, Working Man Bender trilogy. I'll play us on out of here, and I'll see you next time. Hey, do me a favor. Keep it bent. Mm -hmm.